Diatomaceous earth is a single cell algae that lived in some freshwater lake some nine million years ago. Their source of water was cut off to these freshwater lakes. Subsequent tectonic movement, the diatomite was covered by volcanic ash and some of the gray material over some stream gravel, over some erosional material that subsequently covered it and preserved it. When they die, their skeletal remains is highly silicious and there's about 1.1 million of these diatoms per square inch. These are microscopic organisms. First thing you do is you drill and you see what is the depth of the overburden to the diatomite to the ore. The depth of the overburden can vary from 60 to 180 feet. Here we see three distinct geological periods of the ore that has dried up. As you notice, there is one layer of diatomite. Below that is a thin layer of volcanic ash from a specific event in time, such as an erupting volcano. Beneath the first level of volcanic ash lies another layer of diatomaceous earth, preceded in time by a narrow band of waste material, with another deposit of diatomite under the waste. How much does diatomaceous earth weigh in comparison to other materials? Travel weighs approximately 2,400 pounds, something like that. Our material, a yard, would be a third of that. Pick up any of these chunks you think is going to weigh a couple hundred pounds and uh, you're going to end up finding out this weighs about 25, 30 pounds. This weighs approximately, I would say, about 18 pounds. Tell me, Mac, when's the best time for mining? Better to uh, mine in the summertime for solar drying because uh, it's quite an expensive thing to uh, dry the material. It has to be zero moisture when it goes through the kiln for the processing. So the more air drawing they do, the less natural gas they have to use at the plant. It's real critical to emphasize uh, our selectivity. What's the next part of the process? Then you sample the diatomite based on the uniformity. You take the sample to our analytical lab and we try to duplicate the process which you would go through the plant. You classify it, get the uh, contaminants such as dirt sand out of it, then the end product is mixed with soda ash and it's calcined at approximately 1500-1600 degrees to duplicate what the material would do. Then the finished product would again be put through another air separation process. The specific requirements of the customer dictates the level and variety of processes before the final product is delivered to the client's facility. What happens to the holes in the ground? As a part of a continuous mining plant, all the holes would be backfilled as we move out. Saving topsoil and replanting it with the native grass and re-sloping all the waste dump area, reclaiming it to make sure we restore it to the original condition there. Its use was found in Germany over 100 years ago. Uh, this material is essentially used for filtration material in uh, breweries, edible industries, as an additive to pharmaceutical for pharmaceutical purposes, paint industries like the abrasive for toothpaste, edible oil, edible oil, corn syrup, wine, inert chemical. It's used as a filler, used as a filler in the filtration, 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 filtration material. Which brings us 